Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I'd like to talk to you about birds. One of the easiest ways in which to add a little bit of life to a quiet landscape, other than sheep of course, is to include a few simple birds. Got yourself a few unwanted spots of paint on your skywash? Easy, turn them into birds. The thing is, there are a couple of traps I often see students fall into when it comes to adding simple birds to a landscape. The biggest trap of all is a lack of imagination. So in this video, I'd like to offer a few ideas for bird shapes other than just the common V shape and suggest things to look out for when you're painting several birds at once. Well, that'd be a flock then. I need to create myself a composition in which I can place a few birds. I'm thinking a simple coastal scene will do. Something with wild crashing waves and a few jagged rocks. If in doubt, start with a wet in wet wash. I know, I know, call me Mr Boring. I use cadmium yellow, cadmium red and French ultramarine time and time again for loose wet in wet backgrounds. What never ceases to fascinate me however is just how different it always turns out. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. There are waves here so I'm lifting out some sea spray with a screwed up piece of tissue. With practice, it's possible to create some lovely random highlights, both in shape and intensity. Just alter the pressure you apply to the paper to vary how light it turns out. Once the initial wash has dried, it's time to create some rocks. I'm winging it here, no pun intended. The rocks don't exist anywhere in the real world, so don't ask me where it is. It's a rock arch, such as can be found in lots of different locations across the globe. And I've used cadmium red to give it a hint of warmth and French ultramarine. The most important thing is to keep them light so that the initial wash shows through. Watercolour is a transparent medium, so we should seek to exploit that property whenever we can. We should allow the white of the paper to show through, because that's where all the light within our painting comes from. Think of it as a backlight. Apply the paint too thickly and you prevent the backlight from shining through resulting in a dull finish. Having said all that, my next layer of rocks, mixed from French ultramarine and burnt umber, is considerably darker and the mix much thicker. Notice how I'm constantly softening it off along the bottom edge with a damp brush and dabbing at it with the tissue to maintain the illusion of spray. Here's another way to create sea spray. Scratch away the pigment with sandpaper. You have to be careful not to be too heavy handed with it, so as not to destroy the surface of the paper too irreparably. But it is a great way to produce random highlights, particularly on rough textured paper. Marvellous. It's time to give some thought to the birds I wish to populate my scene with. Most people, when asked to draw or paint a bird, will go for the classic V shape. 
This is okay since it is exactly the shape that a bird makes at one point in its wing flapping cycle. But there's a little more to it than that. Because a bird's wings are flexible when it heads in a downward direction, the tips of the wings are forced upward slightly. Likewise, when the wings are heading in an upward direction, so the air will force the wing into a curved shape, not absolutely straight at all. Using the single line method is perfectly okay for most occasions. These are simple birds after all, not ornithological studies. It's good to vary them however. Think about how the bird might look from a slightly different viewpoint instead of just head on. Well, I'm clearly no bird expert, so I'm not going to get into the specific shapes of different breeds of birds. A hawk is going to have a different wing shape to that of a sparrow. The tail feathers on a swift are going to be vastly different to those of a crow. I'm talking more about whether the bird is flying towards us or away from us. Is it looking up or to one side? Viewed from sideways on, you might only see one wing, for instance. Or, if you're looking directly up at a bird, you might see its fully outstretched wings as it wheels about in the sky above us. Finally, think about how the classic V shape might be expanded upon. Filling it out slightly will suit a bird that's nearer than others, although because of its position you might still not see its head. When painting more than a single bird, you should take care over how you space them out. Think in thirds. If you have three birds together, never place the middle one exactly halfway between the outer two. A one-third, two-third split is always better. Vary their shapes and sizes. Having them all flying in perfect formation would be bad enough. Having them all striking exactly the same pose at the same moment would just look too weird for words. Finally, and you just have to trust me when I say this, if you have lots of birds in a scene, it's a good idea to make them odd in number. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Birds can bring welcome life to a composition. Just be sure not to overdo it. Until next time, take care. Ha 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 